Initiating system one. System one loaded. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome once again to Ikra Kids TV Season 2. Now we hope you guys have been enjoying Season 2 because we've decided to switch things up a little bit and change it up. Yes, of course, you've got the regulars like Muslim Heroes, Random Art Studio and of course you've still got Let's See the World but we've also added some new features such as Muslim Maestros, ABCs of Islam and Kun Fire Kun with our two amazing host <laughs> right there's one other thing we want you guys to do in our new season two we have because we're getting really technical these days we've got a qr code if you don't know what a qr code is i'm going to put it somewhere on the screen right now okay you can see it now okay that qr code all you need to do to go to our instagram page is whip your phone out take a photo of it and hit that thing it will take you directly to our instagram page so try it out now okay hit that QR code with your phone and you should go directly to our Instagram page. Now on our Instagram page that is where we want all of your feedback. We want you to tell us if you want to be on any of our shows like Random Art Show or if you would like to send some of your artwork in. That's where you should go to do it inshallah. Right before we get into today's show because I've been working so hard at it I wanted to keep your brains active and what we've decided to do in parts of season two is to give you a bit of a quiz okay now the intro that we're doing now i'm going to be coming back halfway through the show and at the end but i'm going to do two questions for you okay i want you to think about it you don't have to send in the answer all i'm going to do is give you the answer halfway through the show set another question and at the very end we'll see if you can get the answer to that question as well right let me see mm, how many pillars are there in Islam? Remember, you don't have to send it in or write anything in, okay? All you need to do is think about it and at the halfway through, we'll see if you've got it right. Is that cool? Right, so how many pillars in Islam are there? Right, should we get on with the show? Check it out. Initiating system one. System one loaded. Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome once again to the Random Art Studio. We are going to continue our theme, which is drawing creatures, creepy crawlers and animals that appear in the Quran. Today we've got one of those creatures that you're not supposed to eat. Okay, we all know that, but it doesn't mean it doesn't appear in the Quran in one shape or another. It is known as a swine, but we're going to call it a little piggy, okay? Let's have a look at the piggy we're going to draw. There it is, it's so cute. As usual, I have to try and find the cutest animals that I can. Ho, 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 ho. And if you've drawn anything cute or cool or interesting that you want the entire world to see, you can have it done by sending it to us. All you need to do is go to our Instagram account. As usual, inbox me, say, my name is this, I live such and such, and I like drawing, ta, 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 ta. Send me a few pictures, not just one or two, maybe four or five pictures. The more, the merrier of pictures that you've drawn, whether they're related to what we've done here on the show or not, it doesn't matter. I love to see artwork from you guys out there. So make sure you go to our Instagram page, follow us, like and share, etc., etc., etc. Right. Let's look at our little piggy, shall we? Right, I've got the same picture here on my phone. And as usual, we're going to be following the two techniques. One is the grid system. Two is going to be basic shapes. Now, looking at the pig, the swine, the little piggy that we've got here on our picture, the picture is oblong, so it's long, okay? So we're going to use just our free hand, no rulers. We're going to start drawing in that kind of long oblong shape it's not a complete square okay i'm using free hand to roughly draw in that shape okay 
Now, I always emphasize for you to do it by hand, okay? But the thing is, once you've gotten really good at doing it by hand, this might sound a bit backwards to you, but bear with me, it will make sense. Once you've gotten used to doing it by hand, then you can start using a ruler, <laughs> okay? And get it accurate. Why do I say that? Because suppose somebody says to you, wow, I really like your drawing. Do you think you could draw my, 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 my little baby for me? And you're like, uh, yeah, I could. And then you say to them, can you get me a picture of your baby? They say, oh, okay, right? At that point, you get the picture of the baby, and instead of drawing the lines on the picture itself, you get some, uh, some clear film or acetate or something, put it, tape it onto the picture, and then with a ruler, do the grid system. You can have four, like what we do here, or more shapes, and do it with a ruler, measure it correctly so everything is divided equally. Then go to your drawing surface, your pad or what have you, and recreate the same grid system but bigger on your piece of paper. Make sure the measurement is exactly the same in proportion to what you've done. That will ensure more accuracy. Okay, so at this stage, we're just getting used to doing it. That's why I don't wait to use rulers and stuff like that at this stage. I don't wait to get used to it. But once you get used to it, and many a time, I can think of one or two of my friends back in the olden days, they wanted me to do a picture of him, my friend Trevor and his wife. They both moved to Australia now. They wanted me to do a portrait of both of them. So I had to use the grid system. So once I got the photo of them, I got some clear film tape, uh, acetate, which is just clear film, put it over the picture, taped it on so it wouldn't move, and then with a bio roll or some kind of magic marker, I put the lines in using the ruler. Then I recreated the same shape, but bigger on the canvas I was painting. And that way, so when I started sketching it out, there's more lines, they're more accurate, and there's more chances of you getting your picture to look exactly like what you're trying to do. That is the point where you become semi-professional that you need to have your picture look exactly like the thing you're copying. Because no point you draw in there Uncle Mick and it doesn't look like his eyes in the wrong place and Uncle Mick looks like Uncle Fred or something, right? At that point, you need to have accuracy. So that's why I said for now, we're just using freehand. But later on, when you want to take it a bit more seriously, then start using a ruler and matching it out properly. Right. Let's look at this little piggy. Now, unlike some of our other pictures where the head usually is in the top left-hand corner, the head is kind of in the middle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, gonna draw a blob roughly where that head goes. The, the majority of the head is in this side here. It's kind of like this. It's not too close to the edge and it's a bit further from this edge. So it's maybe about here somewhere. And it's, it is just basically a sh round shape. Okay, roughly. Then let's see the bottom part where he's sitting. It's a little bit away from the, from the bottom, so I'd say about here. Then I'd do his back coming out like that, and his arms going down, and then his other legs sticking out like that. His little tail, we'll worry about that later, okay? That's an easy thing to do. So that's roughly. Roughly, let me just do it a bit darker so you can see it. Okay, like this. Roughly there. See what I mean? See what I mean? So we've roughly got the, 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 the shape we wanted. Okay, it might change as you look at it more closely. You might realize, oh, like I've just done now, that head is a little bit too high. And maybe the ear, the head could be a little bit flatter on this side. But we'll figure those details out in a while. The cheek comes out a bit here. Okay, the cheek comes out a bit here. We'll figure those out. One thing that I know for a fact is that that eye, his left eye, his right eye, <laughs> is directly on the cross where those lines meet. Directly, and the other eye is the same, but further over, okay? Now, as I look at it, I'm realizing the distance from the eye to the edge of his, edge of his head, it's not, I've got it too far. So it needs to be a bit closer. I'd say more like that. So these lines here are totally wrong. Gonna get rid of it, no problem. That's why we invented rubbers. Okay. And the top of his head, I'm just gonna rub this line off.
turn. Oh, my turn. My turn. Oh, your turn. My turn. Oh, your turn. My turn. My turn. Your turn. My turn. Your turn. Your turn. My turn. Your turn. My turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, my arms getting tired, my turn, your turn, your turn, stop complaining, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. Ooh, ooh, well, ooh, well, my arms really hurt me now. I know, I know, but don't worry, it's good exercise. We should always do exercise to keep ourselves happy and fit. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs>
This arm is just about where that line is there and goes over and this one goes over and then they're going to kind of meet there together and there's going to be a line there. There's going to be one leg there. His other leg kind of goes back round and he's got his two little toes sticking out there. See, I'm still keeping my lines fairly light, even though I need to make him darker so you can see him on the telly, but I'm still keeping him fairly light because I'm still not quite 100% convinced that everything is where I've put it. It might have to move in a while, but for now, it's close enough. Okay, let's just put that leg in there. And there. And his nose is a lot broader, actually, than what I initially did. Because it goes underneath that eye, and it nearly goes underneath that eye as well. Then you've got some circles there, and a circle inside the circle. A circle there, and a circle inside the circle. Okay, and his eyes are just completely black with two light circles inside. Let's just fill those eyes in so we can see. <laughs> Get it? Fill those eyes in so we can see. Ha ha ha, I'm, I'm hilarious, I know. Right, like that. And then we can put those rosy cheeks in. <laughs> and his eyebrows, again, look like tears. Okay like that and then he's got that line above his nose that, that's almost covered by that line the grid line and then we can continue with the ear up like this goes down again and it's got like a line on the inside as well few lines actually. Here again. Now this is a lot easier than the other ones I drew. The monkey, the lion, the camel. Those were hard. I might, I don't mind confessing it to you guys. I was struggling a bit with those ones. Um, but it's always good to test yourself and have a few difficult ones from time to time. It shouldn't be all easy peasy all the time. Okay, you need to challenge yourself from time to time and really you know, push your skills. Because no matter what you do, you're always learning. Your brain is always absorbing information. And it's just a matter of how much you can retain that information and then use it when you start drawing things. And again, that goes for anything you want to do in life. Your brain is always taking information in. Okay, let's put that leg there. And his leg, the back of his leg. And his tail, I said we'd get back to that. So his tail goes up. Actually, I've got it to be further up like this. And it goes round, just like a pig's tail you expect. And goes round again. There you go. Let's get rid of this line here. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Again, guys, we're not going to be coloring anything in today or shading too much. Uh, we're just trying to get those uh, basic shapes in. Learn how to use a grid more because nothing you do once is ever going to be correct, okay? It's going to take a while to get your head around the grid system. Basic shapes. The head is a circle. The ears are triangles. The legs and the... I'm going to say arm. The legs here are like long tubes. And his back is like a circle here. And let's just put some shading in a little bit, as I said, on his hooves. Not too much. Okay. Now this picture has been done as a vector image. So there's a lot of these uh, concentric lines, additional darker pink lines, which is, it all helps with the shading and to give it more form and body. But we're not going to be too concerned about that. I'm just going to put a few basic lines in to show the shapes and the shading. That. There you go. The shading under his neck, down his arm like that. Oh, yes. Oh, I like it. Right, his nose is a bit darker. So I'm going to make those lines a bit thicker that we can see. Okay. 
not exactly Peppa Pig, but it's still cute. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and he's got some round, lighter shades on his head there as well, emphasizing where the light is hitting his head. Let's get rid of some of these lines here that we don't need that we used while we were constructing the rest of his shape. Right, that is pretty much done. That is pretty much done, guys. And that didn't take a lot. Nice one, nice one, nice one, nice one. Right, see then, guys. Uh, I'm very pleased with that one. Not bad. Could have improved a little bit on his chin here and his cheek there. Um, yeah, a few little things I would touch up here and there. But overall, I think it's not bad. Uh, again, we haven't really talked about shading uh, underneath them to show the shadow or anything like that as well, but it's okay. I'm just going to put a few more darker lines under his neck. And that's it, right? We're going to draw that one to a close right there, guys. Easy peasy, the grid system, looking at basic shapes. When you're out and about, you know, going about your business, school, whatever, look at things and try and figure out what the basic shape is. How would I begin to draw that particular thing? If you saw a car, I know the square shape of a car, you know, it fits into this shape, doesn't it? Very basic, like this. And then you start putting the curves in here and there, you start putting the wheels in the door, you start, the, but that basic shape is what a car fits. If I just did this, you'd say that's a car straight away. If I did this, they did two circles, yeah, that's a car. But that's the basic overall shape of any car. And then you'd start talking about, is it four door? Is it a hatchback? Then bits and pieces like that, what kind of wheels does it have? That is what we're talking about with basic shapes. So have a look around when you're doing things and just think about how would I draw that thing if I was using my basic shapes. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. Asalaamu Alaikum. another amazing show did you guys get the answer to the quiz how many salah are there in islam five of course five salah during the day right just want to remind you that our qr code is on the screen here as well so if you want to be on this show for random art or anything else by all means make sure you go over there and you can inbox me your artwork if you want to be on the show all of that good stuff would be absolutely amazing right guys so speak to you soon yeah, hope you like Kids TV.